Hello everyone and welcome back to the Mega Man 11 Any% Percent tutorial series. This episode is going to be particularly long because uh, this is the first stage where we're going to be using a W tank in the level. However, I understand that some people may not be comfortable with using W tank strats. They are a little bit more complicated, a little bit more stressful on your hands. So for this first playthrough of the of the stage, you're going to see me not using the W tank strat. This is for people who specifically are not ready to use W tank strats. Throughout the run, you'll pick up two of them really, really easily. There's one in Blast Man, and we've already picked up the one in Tundra Man stage. Um, they're basically in the way, so uh, the only stage that uh, I would have to force you guys to, to learn with a tank is Bounce Man stage. That said, this stage and Block Man stage currently have a W tank routed in. However, if you don't feel comfortable with the W tank strats, then this first playthrough will be your example so that you can see how you can go through the stage uh, without the need for it, so that you can save your W tank for Bounce Man, and then you can have that other W tank as a backup. When I started running this game, um, I, was, I was forced to learn the game very, very quickly, um, and in the attempt to do so, I found a number of backup strats. Uh, there are so many different strats that... Uh, that that converge and, and split apart depending on whether or not you get lucky drops. So this stage not only has a bunch of W tank strats, um, but this is also one of the first stages where I learned to really pay attention to my ammo. Top runners are always uh, trying to change what they do and how they go through certain rooms based on what drops they get. If they get a small drop here or a large drop there, what can they do or what should they, uh, what should they do in order to make the most use of that weapon energy. You can see that right now I have three blips of energy. That tells me that I could have used two powered impacts uh, previously, but I chose not to because this playthrough was specifically meant to showcase what type of strats you'd be using if you don't get any energy drops. I will be showing off later, once I show off the W tank variation of the stage, uh, what you should be trying to do when you do happen to get a bunch of good drops, where you can use them, and uh, how they might change up your strats, um, and then what you can exactly hope for or fish for in terms of uh, maybe you want to try and get a couple more drops out of some small enemies, or maybe you just want to cut your losses and, and burn it all out. Now Torchman is not a very difficult fight if you have Tundra. If you don't have Tundra, this fight is really, really bad. <laughs> he is a pretty random guy, all things considered. Despite the fight being so simple, he can really juke you. And now we're back at the beginning, and this time you're going to see the W tank strats. So for those of you who are ready for those more advanced strats, you will be saving time over those who do not want to use a W tank in Torchman's stage. You can already see there's more aggressive use of powered impacts and regular impacts throughout the beginning of the stage. And even later on, when I show what Reeves does, you'll get the chance to see uh, what you can do if you really want to be fishing for drops that are all over the place, because these enemies are just dying to give up ammo. Now, in this particular run through uh, with W tank usage, I actually did get a small drop and I did change my strat accordingly. Uh, so you will see me uh, doing something slightly different than I would normally do if I was extremely unfortunate and got zero drops whatsoever. Because of how many times I've done the stage, uh, the natural practice that I have with it, at a glance, uh, when I enter this room and I shoot down these tents, I take a look at my ammo and I just double check to make sure, hmm, okay, I have a little extra ammo, so instead of doing two powered impacts, I'm going to do two regular impacts. So now I have one blip of energy that I can hold on to in hopes of, uh, say I don't get lucky in this room and I don't get any drops whatsoever, then at the very least, once I finish this room in the next room, instead of using my W tank immediately like you would right here, I instead get to use a powered impact right there, then switch to my tank, fill her up, and then I'm gassed and ready to go. By holding on to that single blip of weapon energy, instead of having to spend four ammo, I only needed to spend one, and now I have an extra impact that I'm going to use. And it's cases like this, when I'm playing this stage, that make me find it so addictive to just keep grinding out, because sometimes you get a lot of good drops, sometimes you don't get any, and then you have to really think, you know, conservatively. But on those times when you get a ton of weapon ammo, you're just like, man, where do I even spend it all? That's a good feeling, and you can get that in a run if you're prepared for it. Now you may be thinking, why wouldn't I want to do W tank strats if they're obviously they're a little bit dif more difficult to do, uh, but this game is already difficult to play through. You get two tanks, one in Tundra, one in Blast, as I mentioned before. Uh, one is guaranteed for bounce. The other one, arguably, is better spent on block. So if you want to learn block W tank strats, then you would save it for that and not use the, the W tank strats in this stage. However, if you feel like the W tank strats in block stage are a little too much for you, and you're more comfortable with the Torchman strats, then you can instead use the tank here.
All right, I'm already going to have a field day just explaining the two stage examples uh, back to back. So bear with me if I'm a little bit more breezy, but at this point you should be a little bit more comfortable with understanding what I do without me having to explain every little detail. It's important to make sure you blast the upcoming tent as you jump so that you don't have the rabbit in the way as you slide underneath them. Now as you land, you're firing once at the lower and then once at the upper mushroom. You hold your buster down on the second mushroom just so you can get your charge going. This charge buster is to help you destroy a rabbit that's going to be behind this tent. So when you land on the ground, release the buster, and then jump and fire some rabbit shots, uh, these shots should all connect with the rabbit and destroy it so you can then slide on the ground, uh, which is a minor optimization over instead having to jump over the rabbit. From here you should switch to impact and do two powered impacts over this gap, uh, turn the power gear off and then do one regular one, equip and start charging a buster once more. Now in this room you're going to be doing this the same regardless of whether you use the W tank or not. Your buster should destroy the air stone and the tent so that you can start charging another one immediately. Release this buster as you're falling, then jump and fire three rapid shots at the top of your jump so that you destroy the pakon. As soon as you've cleared the jump, you should already be charging another buster. Use this opportunity to slide on the ground, get some optimal ground sliding, and then jump and fire your buster as you make your way up onto this ledge. Slide, and then do a short hop, and then fire three rapid busters once more. Now as you're jumping over this gap, you want to switch to your impact so that you can pick up any potential drop from the pakon, and then pick up the large weapon drop behind it. So here's your fire chase at full speed. Charge Buster destroys air stone and tent. Have another Charge Buster ready. Remove shield, fire pellets. And again, Charge Buster, remove shield, fire pellets. Grab your weapon energy. You're making it out of this room in 27 seconds, you're looking good. Now, assuming you don't care too much about extra drops in this next room, uh, the way you would be handling this room is a little bit more straightforward. Powered impact gets you over the shield enemy, a delayed impact will get you over this gap without falling down any lower, and then you can just slide across, jump over this rabbit, slide underneath this log. But if we're looking at getting some drops, well we're going to have to change up our plan for this room just a little bit. So we have just about the same approach as we begin the room, but once we get this second unpowered impact across this gap, we want to equip our impact as soon as possible and start charging. And this is so that we can fire a charge buster shot at this rabbit as it jumps, two more pellets on the way down, switch the impact in case it drops something, and in this footage it did, which benefits me greatly in the next room. But for now, let's go back under the assumption that we haven't gotten any drops, so we're going to do a big jump here, powered impact, as late as we can get it so that we clear the fire without getting hit. That owl is also a potential source of weapon energy drops, and if you happen to get some energy from him, well, I'll be showing off how to handle that situation later as well. But for now, the miniboss Sparky, and an interesting property of Tundra is that you can use a slide jump to reset the cooldown of firing a Tundra. So enter the room with power gear on, jump, use power Tundra, as soon as you land, slide, jump, and you can fire another power Tundra. Turn your power gear off, slide up close to him, and then jump and use a regular Tundra. And this is to conserve your ammo so you have the amount that you need for the torch fight. Next couple rooms don't really have anything interesting going on. Just go forward, fire, use your impact. It's not a difficult set of rooms, honestly. It makes for a nice break considering how awful this room can be. Now, after destroying these two airstones, switching to Tundra isn't a bad idea. In case of any emergency, or if you just don't feel comfortable not going for it um, without it, you can use a powered Tundra to immediately freeze the flame pillar. But if you slide at the beginning of this platform and then slide once more under the hole, then you can actually just jump straight up and make it through this gap. This is consistent for me. If you're not consistent with it, I don't blame you. It's not easy. I don't know why I'm consistent with this, of all things. <laughs> And if you're not even going for W tank strats in this stage, then you really don't even need to grab that W tank. This is specifically included uh, so that you can see how you grab that W tank quickly and effectively. Now throughout the rest of this room, you'll see me uh, blasting some enemies out of the way, but once I get to this section with a small spider, I actually kill it, switch to impact, and this is because I'm fishing for drops now. Uh, same thing with this airstone, it could potentially drop something, so I fire away, switch to impact, take it off, fire away, switch to impact, and then I check, maybe I'll get a small drop, and that can help me out later. So now this whole chase sequence at full speed, just jump to blast these two airstones, have Tundra ready, and then I like to jump up, slide, slide, jump, slide in, slide out, equip, make sure I can fire my buster, start fishing for those impact drops, nothing, see you again, maybe I get something. Under the assumption I've gotten nothing, I won't be using a powered impact in this room. Instead, I'll have to jump a little bit deeper to make sure that my impact will get me across underneath those spiders without taking damage. 
same thing in this next room. If I haven't gotten any drops, then I'll have to instead take a big leap and then use a regular impact to get across the gap. But if I have gotten drops, and in those previous two rooms, I could be using powered versions of impact, which makes those rooms a lot easier and faster. Now, if I've been so unfortunate to get zero drops, you would actually jump to the top step and then do a regular impact across the gap up to where that extra health is so that you could then still do this impact without impeding your ability to do one more impact in the next room. Essentially, all your impacts are valued in how much time they potentially save over the other one. So the one that you want to make sure that you have at the end of the day is the one in this next room with these two rabbits and the shield guy. So you slide down underneath on the floor and then use a powered impact because if you have barely the energy to do it, then you might as well make it powered. For this last chase sequence, make sure that you have Tundra equipped as you pick up this ammo. You'll need it for the fight with Torchman. Destroy the airstone and start a charge immediately. Slide across this gap and then fire your buster. With three pellets, you should be able to knock this tank oven back. And then the rest of the stage is honestly not so bad. Just fire a couple lemons, make sure you get the empty tents out of the way, and keep going. Something slightly more optimal you can do, if you fire some bullets just as you touch the ground and immediately begin to slide, that bullet will actually expose the shield that's hiding behind the tent. So you can charge up a buster, land, use the charge buster shot to remove the shield, and then three pellets to clear it out of the way. Shoutouts to Carter Freak for that last minute hot tip. Torchman specifically. Not a difficult fight, he can be a little bit random, but uh, essentially this is what you're going to be shooting for every time. You have enough ammo in this fight for three powered tundras and one regular tundra, but only if you do them in this order. Start with a powered tundra, wait for his iframes to go away, you can approach in the middle of the room, jump over his fireball if you have to, do another powered tundra, turn your power gear off, walk up to him, and then you can fire your regular tundra a little early so that it'll hit him as soon as his iframes go away. For the last one, you want to make sure you wait just a little bit. If you get greedy and clip this one too soon, then you're going to have him with a solid chunk of health left and no Tundra ammo to finish the fight with. So that'll wrap it up for the no weapon tank usage on Torchman stage. Now I'm going to assume you haven't watched the previous section at all, and you're looking to just learn the W tank strats for this stage. W tank strats are a lot of fun. Uh, they're certainly they certainly feel a lot more intense. And I'm just going to assume that you are a slightly more advanced player who's looking for these aggressive strats. As you slide off this ledge, fall down a bit, then use one impact followed by two powered impacts to equip impacts so you can clear out this tent, and immediately switch back to impacts so you can jump do two powered impacts over this gap. Turn off your power gear, jump, and do a regular impact over this tank oven. Now this first fire chase sequence requires that you use your charge buster a couple of times, so just have it ready in specific spots. Once you clear out the airstone of the tent, have another charge buster ready to go. You'll need it for this shield enemy, uh, then three rapid fire pellets to take it out. Start charging buster once more so that you can do the same thing, weaken a shield enemy followed by three pellets to clear it out. Now this small drop that I got right here actually does change the way I do a strat in one of the following rooms. Not too much, but it's enough that I could potentially fish for uh, some extra weapon drops, hold on to my energy for a little bit longer before I use my W tank. But for this room we're going to be fishing for a drop from the rabbit, so use a powered impact then a regular impact to clear the scaffold full of spiders. Charge your buster with a couple pellets to destroy this rabbit, then check for a drop with impact really quickly. I didn't get one in this footage so I'll show off what happens if you do get that in this next room. Let's say that as I killed this rabbit, it dropped a large weapon energy and I was able to pick it up with impact. That's great! That means that in this next room, after I clear out the owl, I'll have the energy for two more powered impacts to leave the roof. Now here's another what if situation. What if in killing this owl I get my large weapon energy? Well, I have to react to that, so once I see my energy has gone up, I actually switch back to impact. But then I have to do a much lower uh, set of powered impacts. You really want to be on the ground as you enter Sparky. Since we can afford to, we're going to be using three power tundras. So during the screen transition, I like to hold my rapid fire buster. I immediately jump out of the slide, which automatically fires, land, slide, jump, and again immediately fires, and then land, slide, jump. Just immediately, you get these three very, very fast power tundras. So let's take a look at Sparky at full speed. Have power gear and tundra in, rapid fire, slide, jump, slide, jump, slide, jump, and he's dead. Now in this next room, after I clear out these tents, I check my ammo, and I see that I have enough for a different strat here. So instead of using a powered impact, I use two regular impacts in this section. Bad RNG, or no drops, looks like this. I instead use a powered impact here, which leaves me with one blip that I instead use for a last powered impact here. When you go for the regular impact in this room, make sure you de-equip immediately so that you can fire a regular buster to get rid of that airstone. 
And again, I don't know why I'm consistent with this, but my, my uh, technique for this is to do a slide at the top here, another slide, a neutral jump, and that seems to get me through the hole pretty frequently. Like, I very rarely mess this up, so I do encourage uh, runners trying this setup. But that is what you have Tundra equipped for, so you can just freeze the fire pillar if you need to. Now, the reason why I even did that strat before, that held on to a single blip of energy, is because after this chase sequence, if I haven't gotten any drops from any of these enemies whatsoever, well that kind of sucks, but at least I still have this one blip that I can use for a powered impact in the room full of spiders. This means that I saved myself an impact that I can use later on in the stage. Uh, if you actually get exceedingly good drops, then you can even delay this weapon tank refill until after you've cleared this room, uh, you'll use a powered impact, and then you'll use your weapon tank, and that'll give you even more energy to play with. But in this room, uh, provide that you're using regular strats, a powered impact there, a powered impact over the tank oven. If you didn't get good drops, you wouldn't have energy for this impact here, but you would definitely want to be using the impact here, and then one more impact over this pit. In the next room, you can just use an impact to get over this gap, slide underneath, and then use a powered impact. For this final chase sequence, it's hard to get any extra weapon energy drops, so it should play out about the same every time. At the top of the mushroom staircase, you'll switch back to impact so that you can refill your impact for a couple more usage. Destroy the air stone and start charging the buster. You'll be releasing it to push this tank up the bank. Three pellets should push it off the ledge, and then you can use an impact to clear this gap and destroy the air stone. As you slide under here, make sure you have Tundra equipped. Use a power Tundra. This will actually clear out a bunch of the tents in the room. This will make it so that you can go on the bottom route by using a charge buster to weaken the shielded enemy and then blast through it with some pellets. As I pointed out before, it's possible to do this in order to get through the room more quickly than using the power tundra. But if you happen to mess this up, what do you do in front of this shielded enemy? Well, so long as you have the ammo for it, instead of having used that tundra there, you can instead realize you made a mistake, expose the tent, and then use a regular tundra to clear him out and keep going. He might drop a little energy there, um, it would be nice, but uh, it's not like you could really make a ton of use of it. Use a powered impact followed by a regular impact to get out of this room. You should be out of ammo at this point, but if you got a little bit of extra energy from that last shield enemy, then you should be able to use one more, maybe even two more impacts in this last hallway. Now Torch, again, not a difficult fight. He'll be opening up with a powered tundra, check to see what he does, uh, jump over any of his attacks, use another powered tundra, walk up to his face, use a regular tundra, and then use a last powered tundra on him. And before this tutorial is over, I actually wanted to bookend it with some of Reeves' strats, because Reeves actually found a bunch of different, very cool ways of uh, fishing for ammo throughout the level. He was very kind to play this back for me on one of his recent streams, so this is what uh, what his best time looks like. He actually got a about four second better stage time than I did. Just gonna set up cameras in every corner of the house. I actually moved a mirror earlier to try and see if I could get a better, like my lights reflect better into my room, but it didn't work too well, unfortunately. No, the spider RNG you mean? The spider RNG is not consistent. It's all over the place every time. Oh, I do something different there now. So this isn't with my most recent strats. All the energy. Like I said, I got ridiculous energy drops during this stage.
Thanks for watching. See you next time with Blastman.